Blessings to you. Welcome. Did you hear me? I said you welcome. Come on in and let's enjoy the Lord together tonight for another edition of Atlanta Live. I am Dr. Michael Mosley, and I'm so glad to be with you tonight. And more importantly, I'm so glad to be sitting next to this lovely lady who is the sweetheart of my life, my darling wife, Lady Anelia Wright Mosley. How you doing, darling? I am amazing. And welcome to our night of prayer and the prophetic. I'm so happy to be right here with you as well. Y'all, he looks amazing, doesn't he? Oh, I'm trying. <laughs> I, I'm trying. I told somebody, you know, y'all the main, the main outfit. I'm just the accessory. <laughs> But I bless God. I'm thankful to be the accessory. <laughs> Listen, there's so much that God has in store for you. So you need to log in. Where do they need to log in? They need to go to www.watc.tv. I want you to call your family. Ma matter of fact, you don't even have to call them. Just text them. Get on to watc.tv right now. It doesn't matter that you don't have cable. We have it. We have the internet. So log on because they have to hear the special guests that we have here on tonight. And right now we're ready to go into worship and praising God with a song called Deliver from the FM2 and Intentional. Come on and put your hands together like this.
I know you up. I know. I, don't sit down on the sofa. I know. I know you was in the heat there. I know. I, I saw you. I saw you. Oh, the power of God. They're coming back and they're going to bless us again. So you don't want to go anywhere. I wonder what they're going to do next. We'll be doing some exercise, right? Oh, the power of God is here. And we are so grateful that you are joining us in this night of prayer and prophetic right here on Atlanta Live. And darling, we are so grateful for this man of God that has graced our presence and such an anointing he has. Welcome with me, Pastor Anthony Murray. How you doing, man of God? I'm great. I'm so glad to be here, Dr. Mosley. I'm so excited. It's been a long time. It's great being here. Yes, I am excited now, and I really do mean that. We were talking earlier, <laughs> and yeah, we ain't going to go on into that. Yeah, we, we, we can we, now. We, we buddies can. already. That's right. We just buddies. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, it is good to be able to connect with someone that really, we say this a lot, but I really do mean it with a real a realness about them. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I feel the same. The feeling is mutual. You know, we're in a time now where people need to be real, authentic to who they are. But you know, some people cannot handle realness. Some people cannot handle. They got to have the, the you know, the pump and pious. They got to have it. Some, so everybody, you made a statement in the green room that everybody's not your audience. No, everybody, you, I believe that. I believe certain places in the earth, God prosper a person and other places he won't. And I believe certain people are meant to be in others' lives, and some people are not. Also, yes. people born evil just like you was born good. Uh-oh. Yes. Straight up. Yes. People are, I've learned that after two and a half decades in ministry. Some people came to the planet evil. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. And some just people evil. came good. <laughs> Lord, I hope I was one of them good ones. I don't know now. I don't know. <laughs> you your mouth. Well, anybody ask you nothing, huh? We're going to talk after we have to But listen, now, you, you, I, I read about you, and it, you so funny. You so funny. I heard. Oh, Lord, you finna do this already? what I heard. <laughs> I heard you used to go to church to find a girlfriend. Listen, now, that, you know, hearsay is hearsay. <laughs> hearsay, that was two decades ago. The truth is, they trying to make men, women, and women men, and I'm tired of not being able I love women. I think women are the best thing God made on this planet. But she sure is. See what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what, what, why do I have to feel weird? Why do people in our time now, men, yes. got to feel weird about being men? That's one of the things I'm after at our church. Strong men. Strong. For real. Yes. That love women that'll take care of their wife, take care of their daughter. Yes. Take care of their mama. Be a provider. Love God. Be a, be a man. Oh. Straight up. Yes. Now, you giving them that freedom to actually do that. Absolutely. My church and my life, my ministry, because you don't have to be a part of my, you don't have to be in this one geographical location to be a part of my ministry. We everywhere online. But one thing that I believe is a no judgment zone. Who am I to be judging folk anyway coming yes. in the church? When I say judging, you judge between right and wrong, but you can be gay, straight, bi, tri at my church. At, what, it's one place in the world people should be able to be who they are coming to God, and it should be the church. Yes. But it seemed like we didn't turn that into a place to turn people off. And I've met more people real about God the last few years in the street yes. than at the church. And so, you know, but not at Oasis. <laughs> now, Oasis is the name of your church. Yes. And you told me it's four weeks old. Yeah, I founded the church 17 years ago, but we moved to downtown Atlanta through the pandemic. Wow. So I was in Atlanta. We started, we was in Paulding County, Dallas, okay. Georgia. We moved to Buckhead. So I started a Saturday thing. It grew. And then we got a building in Adamsville. It grew. And the pandemic came. And the Lord told me, don't open back up when everybody else did. And it, it hurt, but I listened. He said, it, he said, I'm going to eclipse what you did. So I opened up four weeks. This is my, this will be fifth Sunday, number five. And if you go online and see, it's been, it's been crazy. You can't wow. make it up. And God is just that real. So I'm following him and it's fun. Like this is the fun time now. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. I, in ministry. You know, um, one thing that I love about seeing your ministry, it is authentic. I got a chance to hear some of the clips, authentic worship, people crying out to God. You can tell even in audience people, they come as they are. They're being welcomed. Tell us if someone is right now looking for a ministry, but they don't know where to go. Tell us, how can they find your ministry? 
Come see the unlocker. You almost made me get in tears because I'm so excited again about God mm. being saved like this. Yeah. Yes. Follow me online first. My name's Anthony Murray, underscore Anthony Murray. I do prayer every morning just about. Put me in your notifications. Mm -hmm. We pray, we teach 3 in the morning, 5 a.m., whenever. And then uh, you go to my website, oasisfamilylife.com, and check the church out. But the easiest thing is just type Anthony Murray, The Unlocker, and you can be a part of the church locally, and you can be a part of the church globally online. And that's the new, I'm building a post-pandemic church, and the yes. pandemic ain't over yet. You're yes. right. That yes. is very But I true. want a revival. What's happening, in, I almost got in ticks, like, I'm a part of it too. I get a chance to experience God in a new way for the first time with them. Yes. Kind of like when I was a youth pastor. I was 19, 20, right? Yes. Kids was coming to church. We was all learning God at the same time. I was a leader, but we were growing together. And I feel the same now, except I'm 46. <laughs> oh, sure, all the hair fell off my head and grew out my nose. <laughs> Your dad was a pastor. Yeah, I grew up on PK. My dad's a pastor, still is. My dad's wow. pastor. My brother's a pastor. Uh, my sister's an entrepreneur. We Murray's. My daddy raised us like this. Pastor, me in my house, you'll get beat up if you're going to go to church. Wow. <laughs> you're going to serve the Lord. And you're going to tithe and give. But I hated him for that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stand the church, and I hated him for that. Like, uh, why can't I be like them? But he always said, you're not. We work, Murray's, we work for ourselves. We serve God. Anthony, put $100 in church. I used to hate him because I was cutting <laughs> hair. But God blessed me. And I'm blessed right now because of what he taught us. That is awesome. Tithing, giving, and great work ethic. And treat people right. He said, never judge a man at a glance. You never know who that person is. You never know. So treat people right. So I try my, I ain't perfect, you know. I'm telling I can want to punch somebody in the face, but you know, most days, Not you. <laughs> most days, I ain't going to do it, you know, but most days I can be cool, you know? Yes. Uh, now, where is your church located in Atlanta? Oh, I'm excited to tell you, man. And I'm we, excited to hear. 23 Jesse Hill Jr. Drive, next to Grady Hospital, down in the heart of the city, downtown. Yes. Now, I bought the building in the pandemic for an investment. Tell me how God, how crazy God, I didn't know Dr. King. I wasn't thinking Dr. King when this, was in this area. The church 103 and three years old, Edgewood Avenue, wow. all of that. It was the wealthiest, they said the wealthiest Negro street in America. That's true. And God gave it to me, my leg. We're going to do business. See, I don't, I don't just want to do church. I want to empower people in business. I want people to have a good sex life and love life, too. I want people to make money. Oh, I want people to know wait, how to wait, have wait, fun. Wait, wait, don't you go there now. This is, this is a holy, holy place. Well, let, well, let me ask you a question. What does holy look like? That's what they be telling me. What it look like? What is holy? What is holy? What is, holy? What is, holy? What is it? Yes. A big old collar and a tie? Or is holy a man or woman that say, I'm set aside for God? Yes. You tell me to leave Paulding County, a mega church, and move down downtown, I'm going to do what he said. Yeah. God asked me during the pandemic, I had to fund the ministry. Yes. Three years closed. And I got low on my money. You know how, I'm sure you're a man. I'm like, yes. I got some bailout money just in case something happened. I hear you. The Lord said, I want that. He said, I want to know, will you give me your rainy day? Hmm. I want to know that because what I'm going to do in your life next, you ain't getting none of the glory. And let me tell you, I gave him my rainy day. And now I got this church in the city. And the Sunday was crazy. The first Sunday was crazy. Last Sunday was nuts. People are coming. And I'm like, wow. And this place will be worth $60, $70 million when I get done with it. Can oh. you believe that? I, I, God, yes. God yes. did it. And I ain't that smart. I got to say that he get the glory. But isn't it exciting? It, it is. is. And I think this is a, a testimony to so many leaders that are out there. I'm a PK as well. And oh, I, wow. Going in, going up in that, being married to a pastor, you know, a lot of times, you know, when, when you have those rainy days in the church and you try to take it on your own shoulders, it can get very, very stressful, <laughs> uh, you know, but hearing you say what you say, hey, I was obedient to the Lord. The Lord told me to take my personal rainy day and give it to him. Anytime you give God anything... He's going to always multiply it. Every time. And I learned this fourth dimensional thinking. This third dimension, the earthic place, the fourth dimension, the psychic realm, and the third and the fourth work. The unseen world is more real than the world you see. Yes. And I, I flow in that dimension, and I saw it. And God said, I'll do it for you. I saw it, but my reality didn't look like what I saw. But I've learned 
to follow that, that, that voice and that leading. And I was crushed. I, I went through a divorce too during the pandemic. Mm. So I was married 23 years. I've been divorced four and three out of the four was in the pandemic. So I'm in a pandemic trying not to jump off a bridge going through a divorce with a closed church learning to speak online. I mean, it was, I felt like God hated me, man. I thought I was going to die. I said, what did I do so bad for you to treat me like this? But he built me. That's why gay couples welcome at my church. That's why homeless men and my, I got millionaires, actresses, actors, football players, all of us in the same place with one, with one agenda. We need God. Yes. So tell me, what, how did you cope? I've been through divorce before and being a pastor. And I had children, and I was a, a single father at one point, and it was tough. It was really, and then I was traveling the country preaching. What enabled, what caused you, or where did you find strength? Let me tell you, I can't talk a lot about it because I put it in a book okay. called Did God Tell You to Get Married? I put my experience in the book, but I'm going to tell you this. I can't cuss on here, but it was hard. I went through suicidal thoughts. I went through homicidal thoughts. I went through bouts of, of shame and guilt. And people still don't know the, my side. They don't know the story still. Yes. I was sh so I had to shut my mouth while people left and lied. And, but let me tell you about God. When you do what he, God told me, if you shut up, and then I'm going to be honest, I got a pastor. I got to talk about it. My, my pastor is Wiley Jackson Jr. Changed my life. Him. God will always use a man or a woman. He will always use a person to get you through. And that's, and I'm, that's how I became the unlocker. I ain't got to kick doors down no more. I got wow. the key. Come my on, people no. got the key. <laughs> I can join you in that because when I went through my divorce, I had other prophets calling me, saying the Lord said do this and that. But the Lord told me, and I'll never forget this, he said to me, if you just remain silent, I'll give you everything you want. Let me tell you, and listen, look at, let me tell you something. My life right now, I was over there almost in tears. The last time I was here, I was believing God for a level I'm ready to leave now. I, well, how I live now was a dream. Now I'm ready to leave this. Like, this ain't enough. My rainy day I gone. Do. I got a ch I'm doing, I'm on, I'm on T, I'm with you. I'm with the Moses right now. What y'all talking about? I'm sorry, I got you this better tell him, you better tell him. I got some sense now. I hear you. I made it. What y'all talking about? It was hard, man, but God yes. is real. And that's why I know he wanted me to open the church. And I said, if I'm going to open this church, I'm going to be right. myself. I ain't, I ain't got it all together, but I'm dope. And I'm just wow. going to tell the truth. Yes. And, and shockingly, what I thought people would, 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 ridiculed me for that was shameful. They loved me for it. Yes. Let me tell you what else, and I got to shout them out. Man, I got some people who stuck with me. Them people stuck with me through thick and thin. They yes. stuck with me, man. Lord, help. I mean, they stuck with me through the, my darkest hours. Yes. They paid their tithes. They supported. They loved me. When I was confused, they loved me. When I was yes. upset, they loved me. Now they tell me, we can see it, pal. We can see it on you, but now look at me now. <laughs> Hallelujah. God Almighty. Let me tell you, my life is so much better. Hallelujah. After the storm. Yes. I hope somebody listening tonight that'll just believe you might be going through the worst time of your life. You couldn't have told me I was going to do that. But God is faithful if you hang in there. I almost died. I ain't going to lie. I went to 161 pounds. I lost so much weight. I was 196 then lifting weights. I lost, I went from 196 to 161. People don't think men love, but yes. when you love, I love hard when I love. Yes. I'm through. Y'all got to get that book. I ain't going to tell it. <laughs> God tell you to get read on that Amazon. One. Get it. <laughs> I'm telling you. And you know me. I wrote a, I got a chapter I wrote about. Do souls mate? What's a soul mate? Do you get one or two? Mm. <laughs> you ever thought about that? That's my soul mate. Okay. What is that? And do I get one, two, three? What do I do with the rest of my life? Yeah. That's why we need church. Yes. Exactly. And that's yes. why I'm going to go on as far as to say this. We need your church. Wow. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We do need yes. it. I see the anointing of God. I can join you on a lot and I can confirm. Wow. I had some people that stood by me stood, through the darkest when I tried to commit suicide. See? Yeah. Some folk don't realize divorce is really hard. I know why you understand. We understand why God hate divorce. Yes. yes. He permitted. I'm glad. I said this. And it, I said I was going to say it on TV. See, well, I, here I go. Being free now. Getting a divorce, even as a pastor, in the last 10 years 
has been the best choice I made yes. to leave. I left. Yes. Was the best choice I made for us. Yes. My life is a whole nother thing now because I'm free. Yeah. And then I believe when it don't work with two people, I'm gonna say this, you free them too. When you get yes. healed, yes. everybody can be better. Man, you better yeah. preach right about now. Yeah. yeah. But that take, how long did it, it took me about four years. I hear you. <laughs> to get there. But I hear now you. I'm, I'm happy. I'm like, yo, life is, this life. Pastor, yes. I, I need you to give your website because we want people to connect okay. with you and your church and your ministry. What is that website again? OasisFamilyLife.com. OasisFamilyLife.com. If you ever get confused, I'm all over Google. Anthony <laughs> D. Murray. But OasisFamilyLife.com. And then I, I just got a shout out, Instagram and Facebook. If you put my name, Anthony Murray, anything, it'll pop up somewhere. But, but listen, he's coming back. Yes. He's not finished. He's oh, no, we we got some more talking. See, that's why we connected. I'm just warming up. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you don't want to go anywhere, but right now we do want to step further in the presence of God with FM2 and the International with a song entitled International Worship.
God. Just worship God right where you are. Isn't it amazing just to let him know, Lord, we love you and we thank you. Oh, it's okay. Just take, just take 10 more seconds and just tell him, Lord, I really do love you. I know the song is ended, but God, I love you. We thank you and we thank you for tuning in tonight and we're not finished. Oh no, Pastor Anthony Murray is still here and he has so much more to empower our hearts with on tonight. So again, welcome with me and my darling wife, Pastor Murray. Blessings to you. Now listen, oh, we've been, we just, we were talking. There is a great anointing over your ministry and, and over your life. We all know that. What has, what has made your church? This has been the coming up the fifth week. You're saying it's such a great attendance that is there. What do you attribute that to? I think that's a good question. I think people that's coming now are saying, I, 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 I don't care about any of this other stuff. How nice the building is, none of that. I need God in my life. I got a lot, I'm rich already and I need God, or I'm already struggling and I need God. That's what, it's simple. And I try to make complex things elementary like that. Like we want revival, what does that mean? We want an experience. I think people are getting an experience and not just church. I'm tired of church. Yes. I want to, we shout, I teach my people, we shout because he already did it. Yeah. We, yes. we, when we shout and turn around three times, it's not turning around and the next Sunday you're turning around and three months you're, you, you believe in God for a car for 20 years when you can do good business, wow. listen to God, get a car and stay saved and don't have to spend around 30 times in church for, for 20 years. This was my problem as a boy. So I think, I think what's good, what's happening for me and us now, and I think I'm attracting people like me because I'm just saying it. People that's been divorced that thought life was over. Yes. People, I got gay couples and I'm a straight, all the way straight alpha man. I love women, period. But I got gay couples come to my church and I love them and I, and I protect them and we teach and I don't make a distinction. We all, mm -hmm. I ask questions like this. What does God judge harder? You need to get this book. Did God say, what does God judge the worst? Gay sex, adultery, or fornication? Which one he killed? Who he, which, one, which one does God punish the hardest on? Mm. Which one do you go to hell less for? Wow. <laughs> Gay sex, sex and you ain't married, sex why you married, outside of your marriage. Which one? So why do we, see what I'm saying? I hear you. That is the I way I teach, and it's like, Work your own salvation out, because I got my own problems. Yes. So what is the response? Yes. Hearing something that is very bold, what is the response of the parishioners or the attendees? I discuss some people, and they discuss me back. <laughs> they don't like me, and I don't like them either. And other people, they be like, you know what? Now I can be happy, because he is gay. She is, she is rich and want a husband now, and she's 50. She is... A, a sexual being who, who has an appetite that's healthy and she want a husband. But what's she supposed to do for 20 years single? Mm, like, yeah. I just tell the truth. It's like, okay, God gonna kill you for being a woman? Wow. He hates you for being a woman. You, you can't masturbate. You can't have sex. You can't, well, no, you ain't married and you've been single for 20, what? Talk to me about her mental health. Talk to me about his mental health. Mm. Talk to me about, talk to me about his, his self-esteem and her self-esteem. Talk to me about the quality of their life now, you know with what? false teaching. Somebody done turned up the volume on TV <laughs> right now. They're in remote control. I'm looking That's right. That, that. Either they don't like me and I don't like you either. <laughs> or, or you saying he right. Because why, why, you gonna, why somebody got to throw you away because you're a human? Why? So now I got a question for you. How do you balance? Because I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. Been teaching, preaching over 35 years, I believe. There, somebody else is watching right now. Some other preacher is watching. And they want to preach the same thing. However, they're listening or they're concerned about the other preachers that are listening. I get it. And here's, a qu here's my bold answer and a nice one. First of all, and all you're getting, get understanding. You got to be wise. You can't tell everything all the time. Got to be, it's certain yes. seasons and times. Sometimes you got to be quiet. And then who cares about what a preacher thinks? I don't care what no preacher thinks. You going to pay my bills? What I care? I care about them people God called me to save. Yes. I don't care about what no preacher thinks. What are you going to do? 
What I don't care what a I don't care what a goat think outside. That's that's how my mind. Who I care about is them people, and especially the ones that stuck with me through hell. People be suffering and hurting, man. I was yes. hurt. Yes. I was hurt. I was suffering, and God let me go through it for this reason. And I didn't need no religion rules on me. I needed love. That's it. Yes. I needed somebody to tell me, you're a divorce pastor, and God's still going to use you. Yes. Get up yes. off yes. this floor and get out of your depression and go back to work. And wow. uh, this month, a lot of people um, recognize um, March as Mental Health Month. And I want, because, I mean... I, I really commend you right now because a lot of men, they don't want to let people know that they have suffered mentally. And for you to just say, hey, hey, I wanted to commit suicide. I, I was in pain. I was in depression. Speak to this person right now. They are there right now. They haven't let their spouse know. Nobody around them know, only them. What can you share with them right now? That's powerful. Say something. Because the devil is real. And every time you keep something a secret, that's what he used, that lie and that darkness to make you feel like you're by yourself. I'm the kind of person, I unlock people. This is going to unlock who's listening. You're not alone. You heard somebody say misery, love, company. That's true, but it is not always negative. Sometimes it's good to know you went through a divorce. You, you went to jail. You got in trouble. You had bad credit and you made it. Oh my God, you got molested and, and you went through all of this and you still, you still solid? But yeah, you did. I did therapy, counseling. At one time, I had three people, my pastor, my therapist, and my female spiritual mother coach every day talking to me. Every day. Every day. Because it felt like I had a fight every day. And so I had to deal with being angry one minute and then the next minute, sad and small. It's like it folded me to a letter. It, it, it just, it broke me down to my common denominator. Mm. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me because in those darkest moments, when you're feeling like you're going to die, you ain't doing it, he can yes. speak to you the loudest. That's when at, my, at, at, the, at your lowest time, sometimes that's the best time, God got to get you there so all the other noise is silent and you can hear. I was so busted, I'd have took anything. With, with millions of dollars in the bank, uh, in a penthouse, a Bentley, all of it, mm -hmm. saying, I'll jump off this patio right now. Don't nobody love me. Don't nobody care. The devil is a lie. When I opened my mouth, I was dating a chick. Not date. We was hanging out. And she said, don't, I don't want you to say you were depressed and suicidal. She said, because I don't want people to lose respect for you. I told her, I said, God told me to say it. And I said it before all the bishops and preachers, after I said it, and I got the video. It was the Easter and the pandemic. Now I, had, I heard everybody admitting it now. It's freedom in testimony. Yes. It's yes. freedom in the truth. And I can applaud you for your freedom, which is why I appreciate the name of your ministry, which is a Oasis. <laughs> My place in the middle of life, the watering hole, the place of refreshing, the no judgment zone. On a Sunday, you can lead a club. Don't even change clothes. Come with alcohol on your breath, smelling like weed, and be accepted. You can have a suit and a cummerbund on in my church, or flip-flops and jeans, and be accepted. Now, we ain't with no foolishness now. Of course. We fun. But this the church. And what? guess what? I'm across from Grady Hospital. They ain't discriminating. You get shot, whatever your disease yes. is. They, that's my church. I'm they saving lives, we saving souls. Hallelujah. Wow. That's what Hallelujah. I'm doing. Ain't that exciting? That is exciting. Oh. I almost jumped out my chair <laughs> myself. I tell you. I in, tell you. In, in Matthew, Matthew 6 and 33, it, it says, um, um, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. How does that scripture resonate with you, <laughs> Pastor Murray? Every king has a kingdom. Hmm. That kingdom has citizens. Those citizens have the characteristics of the king. If the king is benevolent, the people will be. If the king is evil, the people will be. The glory of any kingdom is his wealth. Watch this. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. I like to say it like this. Seek ye first the center. Mm -hmm. And the righteousness is not all of the stuff this false teaching make you perfect. Righteousness to me is the way God wants things to work out in your specific life in the world. Seek ye first to center God mm -hmm. and the way it works. He added, if you want money, tithe and give. Yes. If you, if you, want, if you, want, if you want peace, 
Forgive. <laughs> if you want wholeness, be honest. Seek ye first. These are kingdom dynamics. The kingdom is a law. Now you give me, that's my, I'm a kingdom teacher. Yes. yes. Kingdom is fourth dimension thinking and it can't be sought by observation. It must be received or perceived by the seat of your heart. So what does that mean? When you, the kingdom is new rules in the earth, player. That means God got new rules for you. Hmm. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I got, I got good credit, but I don't trust it. I got the credit with God. Yes. Yeah. You can have some money, but you can't trust it. God told me at that time, give it all to all of it. You trust in it. You, tr you are, I didn't know, I didn't know. I, no, you are. You trust, in a, you trust in a way of escape when I'm your yes. way of escape. Yes. Mm -hmm. So kingdom is saying, if you do what I said, I'll cause, I'll, I'll cause the amazing Mosleys to see you online. Four weeks after you open your church, right when you're looking at which TV station you, which three TV stations you want to get on. And the Mosley's email you. You can't make this up and say, come be on my show in yes. two weeks or in a week. That is what kingdom is. This is a kingdom moment and opportunity yes. for me. And I know not to take it for granted. That's the righteousness part. Don't disrespect what God is putting in front of you to bless you. Wow. That's, now that is awesome. phenomenal. So, so now services are in the, with the Auburn it's um, um, Edgewood Avenue. Edgewood Avenue. Yeah, downtown. Avenue. Just say, it's down, right downtown next to Grady Hospital. That's the easiest way because everybody if you know about Grady in Atlanta. And uh, it's 11 o'clock service. Now, after Easter, uh, well, my, uh, let me say, church, we're going to get two months ahead in our new budget, and then we're going to open our other church back up in Adamsville. Okay. So we'll do 9 o'clock there, more than likely, 11 o'clock downtown. But right now, y'all, get there at 11 o'clock. Get there a little early. It's, it's off the hook, man. So what about parking? Wow. They have parking? We got parking, but it's a city church. So uh, we got parking. Some people have to pay. Some people got to walk around the block. Some people can park on the street. And hey, I'm saying if you want to come, pay the park if you got to or get there early. But hey, it's worth it. Yeah, you yeah, I love better that. Than I love than that. Come on, man. I, I had somebody say, I had to pay. For, I'm like, now look. I ain't see you complain at the mall. You go there every Saturday. I ain't. No, I didn't see you complain at the club. You go there every Friday. I didn't see you worry about it at the lobster. You go to brunch every every Sunday at the church. And you gonna talk to me about two dollars? Don't come. Don't I come. I love the fact you you've made that several times. That statement. You know, I don't like you. If you don't like me, and, and and you said don't come. I love the honesty and the boldness that you have. And we have to realize everybody's not our crowd. And I think, well, I'm confident that you have really inspired another minister, another leader, hope so, man. even another male or female to realize, hey, I am who I am. I'm worth who I am. And you have built. And I'm telling you, you have built someone's esteem tonight. Wow. So I want to congratulate you in being open for God to use you. And I'll go as far as to say this. You are bold, and I'm going to be even bolder to say that there are some wonderful people, including some gay couples or gay people, that are saying, finally, that's a place. I hope they'll hurry up and come. I hope you'll come Sunday. Please come and I watch do. and see what you get. You're going to love it. You're going to love the church. You're going you're gonna, to, what I love about the church is my people. They like me. They love people. It's like my family, right? So if you, if you marry into my family, we ain't the type of people that find fault in you first. We trying to accept you in the family. So somebody say, this is my fiance, this is my boyfriend, my girlfriend in my family. My family is like, come on over, right? <laughs> so that's how I feel about the church. And then it's up to them. Um, I took the responsibility of people maturation off of me and leave it on them. Wow. Well, now you tell your family they got another son and daughter. Come on now. <laughs> so, uh, 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 we coming over uh, one dinner for dinner, okay? I'm going to hold you to it. Oh, trust me. And I'm coming to the church. I'm coming. Yes. Listen, yes. oh, we are, we are, thank you. Thank you so very Thank much you. for coming. Both of you all. It has been a blessing. Now, again, the website, how can we find it? OasisFamilyLife.com, but this is, that's the church website. What I really want y'all to do is go on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, put Anthony Murray in, Oasis Church, and put me in your notifications and get up and pray with me in the morning. Yes. I'm, a, I'm praying in the morning on Instagram and Facebook. I'll be talking and teaching on there. Connect with me. Let's, let, let's be a part. Even if you can't get to the church, we can be connected online. I love it. I love it. Well, 
Pastor Murray, everybody. Pastor Anthony Murray, thank you so very much. Thank you. Let's go back and worship God after that. Oh, we, yeah, I feel a praise in my spirit. <laughs> Song entitled, We Made It, FM2 and Intentional. Isaiah 54 and 17. Formed against us. Shall prosper. Out of all we've been through. We're still right here. This is the remix, y'all. Come on, intentional. We made it. Let's go. Hey, the devil. You know he tried to stop us. But we made it. Yeah. He tried to kill. Steal and destroy us. But you know what? But we made it. We made it. You see, he tried to kill, steal, and destroy us. But you know what? you made it to 2022, wave your hands out there. Come on, come on, intentional. We stay tough. We stay tough. Never gave up. Never gave up. We made it. We made it. Yes, we made it. We made it. We stay strong. We stay strong. Keep moving on. Keep moving on. Cause we made it. We made it. Yeah. 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 Never gave up. Never gave up. Cause we made it. 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 We
we're not through yet. Don't you go nowhere. Put that remote down unless you turn up the volume. All right, blessings to you. That was FM2 at Intentional. You know what? We're so glad that we made it. And I'm glad for you that we made it. In fact, we all making through this pollen here in the spring, but yes. we're grateful to God to be alive. Listen, I am excited. I'm really, really, really excited. Now, Pastor Murray, done, he done juiced us all up, but <laughs> I, I'm going up another notch. You know, obviously every round goes higher and higher. I am so excited about my darling sweetheart. This lovely lady has written a book that I want to encourage you to go and get it for yourself. And now, darling, this is her masterpiece. Uh, Y'all, she's not only a singer, a musician, a preacher, a teacher, because you teach uh, middle school as well as college. Yes. She does all of that and had the, with, with, with children and me, being the biggest baby of them all, <laughs> uh, had time to write a wonderful book to encourage you. Darling, the name of the book is called Greater is Within You. Keep going. Now. I, as your husband, I wanted, uh, you know, I, my name is on here too, y'all. Yes, see, he wrote see, the full word. See that at the bottom? But uh, <laughs> what prompted you to write this book? Actually, I wrote this book during, we were in the middle of COVID, and the Lord just started downloading uh, spiritual insight of in, just about me personally. And then after that, I was journaling, and then the Lord said, now I want you to share what I was dealing with you with others. And wow. so um, there are some certain situations that I've dealt with in my life that only my, um, my therapists have heard about, but God gave me a very strategic way to share some of my experiences and even testimonies on how you can be in the, in the I mean, the pit bottom of the valley and God can raise you up. So that's why I say, keep going. Most people, they know me by keep going going. Yes. Every live, Facebook, Instagram, anything that I talk about, it doesn't matter. At the end, the last words you're going to hear me say, keep going. And that's because there's been times in my life where I didn't know how to keep going or I didn't want to keep going. So tell us, what was it that kept you going? What, how did you keep going? Because telling somebody to keep going, yeah. we hear that. But now go uh, just a little bit, because I know you deal with it in the book. Somebody called the house, one of her uh, godparents, and they were telling her, girl, who was this person that was doing this to you? I'm trying to figure out who it was, or I'm going to get them. She got <laughs> some stories in here. But what, how, what kept you? How did you cope with the, the stresses? So how did you keep going? My relationship with the Lord, and that's why I don't care where God has placed you in your life or how much you feel that you know church. What matters is that relationship. I mean, I've been in a church my whole entire life, and just because you're born into a family where your dad is the pastor, your mom is the first lady, that doesn't give you the um, past to not go through anything and not have to deal with anything. God taught me there are some places that your mom and dad can't go with you, your grandparents can't go with you, but you got to know me for yourself, and I'm going to walk and help navigate you through every situation in your life. And I, I mean, that was the time my brother, my brother um, uh, was murdered, and that was bad relationship. Relationships. There were, it was so many different things. I even love the uh, testimony I talk about how God was testing me as a young kid to go and in, in the middle of the night in an area where I was very scared to go at night and to look out the window. And I tried to talk God out of doing it, but then I did it. And then I saw our neighbors shed on fire. And if I didn't go wake up my dad at the time that I did, that family could have lost their lives in a house fire. So I talk about the, being the, the, the crucialness of being obedient to God and having an authentic relationship with God. Because so, if you do that, uh -huh. God will lead you and guide you into all truth. So when somebody get this book, what is your aim or what is your goal for them after reading this book? My goal is that you will keep going and that you will develop a stronger relationship with God. And as you do that, you will see that there is greater inside of you. Some of you all, yes, you've obtained some success in your life, mm -hmm. but God don't want to stop right there. God has more for you. And did you hear Pastor Anthony, how he was, he, he came to this station years ago and he was praying for an area that he not praying that prayer no more because God has did above and beyond. He kept going. He kept going. He so kept going. I want to encourage you. 
to keep going. So now, tell us, where can we get the book? I want you to go to my website, www.aniliawrightmosley.com. That is A-N-N-I-L-I-A-W-R-I-G-H-T. M O S L E Y dot com. Yeah, don't, don't forget the Mosley. <laughs> don't forget. That's a pretty picture. Whoever, photo, whoever took that photo was a very good photographer. And you can find me on all <laughs> social media under Anelia Wright Mosley. So if you have difficulty uh, spelling my name, just go with Anelia. It'll pop up. You got to get the book. It's a, it, I promise you, it will be a great blessing to you. Listen, we're out of time, but we're not out of love and certainly we're not out of inspiration. But I want you to take the advice of this lovely lady. I want you to keep going because there's so much ahead of you. There's so much that God wants to do. Darling, we did it again. Yes, we did. And guess what? We're going to keep going. God bless you. Have a great evening and keep going. <laughs>